Copyright protects the producer or owner of a literary, musical, visual, artistic, or electronic work from illegal use and reproduction. Copyright owners have the right to reproduce or to authorize others to reproduce their work. The fair use privilege is perhaps the most significant limitation on a copyright owner's exclusive rights. If you write or publish, you need a basic understanding of what is and is not fair use. Sooner or later, almost all writers quote or closely paraphrase what others have written. Although fair use for non-copyright holders was not part of or allowed for in the original U.S. copyright law, the doctrine has developed through a number of court decisions over the years and has been incorporated under copyright law. Fair use provisions of the copyright law allow for limited copying or distribution of published works without the author's permission under certain circumstances. Examples of fair use of copyrighted materials include quotation of excerpts in a review or critique, or copying of a small part of a work by a teacher or student to illustrate a lesson. Other instances of fair use include news reporting, scholarship, and research. U.S. copyright law uses four factors to determine if use of copyrighted material can be considered fair use. Number one, the purpose and character of use, like nonprofit or educational purposes. Number two, the nature of the copyrighted work, which looks to the original work to determine how worthy it is of copyright protection. A big Hollywood movie is more protected than a famous speech, for instance. Number three, the amount of what is being used, particularly as compared to the whole. If you're using just a small portion of a much larger work, it is more likely to be considered fair use. Number four, the effect of use on the value of the copyrighted material. If the material being used under fair use substantially harms its value to the creator, then it may be exempted from other fair use rules. You should assume that every work is protected by copyright unless you can establish that it is not. There are five basic rules to keep in mind when deciding whether or not a particular use of author's work is a fair use. Rule number one, are you creating something new or just copying? The purpose and character of your intended use of the material is the single most important factor in determining whether a use is a fair use. The question to ask here is whether you are merely copying someone else's work verbatim or instead using it to help create something new. Rule number two, are you competing with the source you're copying from? Without consent, you ordinarily cannot use another person's protected expression in a way that impairs, or even potentially impairs, the market for their work. Thus, if you want to use an author's protected expression in a work of your own that is similar to the prior work and aimed at the same market, it probably isn't a fair use. If you use somebody else's book on golf to write your own book on golf, and then to compete in the same market, that isn't fair use. Rule number three, giving the author credit doesn't let you off the hook. Some people mistakenly believe that they can use any material as long as they properly give the author credit. Not true. Giving credit and fair use are completely separate concepts. Either you have the right to use another author's material under the fair use rule, or you don't. The fact that you attribute the material to the other author doesn't change that. You have to attribute, usually even if you get permission. Rule number four, the more you take, the less fair your use is likely to be. The more material you take, the less likely it is that your use will be a fair use. As a general rule, never quote more than a few successive paragraphs from a book or article, or take more than one chart or diagram. It is never proper to include an illustration or other artwork in a book or newsletter without the artist's permission. Don't quote more than one or two lines from a poem. Many publishers require their authors to obtain permission from an author to quote more than a specified number of words, ranging from 100 to 1,000 words. 
Contrary to what many people believe, there is no absolute word limit on fair use. For example, it is not always okay to take one paragraph of less than 200 words. Copying 200 words from a work of 300 words wouldn't be fair use, nor would copying 12 words from a 14-word haiku poem. However, copying 2,000 words from a work of 500,000 words might be fair. It all depends on the circumstances. To preserve the free flow of information, authors have more leeway in using material from factual works, scholarly, technical, and scientific works, than to works of fancy such as novels, poems, and plays. This is true especially where it's necessary to use extensive quotations to ensure the accuracy of the information conveyed. Rule number five, the quality of the material used is as important as the quantity. The more important the material is to the original work, the less likely your use of it will be considered a fair use. In one famous case, a magazine article about Gerald Ford that exerted only 300 words from a 200,000 word manuscript were ruled as not a fair use because the material quoted was the most interesting and important part of the manuscript and that pre-publication disclosure of this material would cut into the sales of the book. Determining whether your intended use of another author's protected work constitutes a fair use is usually not difficult. It's really just a matter of common sense. There is no more commonsensical definition of fair use than the golden rule. Take from someone else only what you wouldn't mind someone taking from you. Even though the law permits fair use and provides guidance in the form of the four factors that we just learned about, purpose of use, nature of copyrighted work, amount used, and effect on value, the distinction between fair use and infringement of copyrighted material may be unclear and not easily defined in certain situations. There is no specific number of words, lines, or notes that may safely be taken without permission. Acknowledging the source of the copyrighted material does not substitute for obtaining permission. The safest course is always to get permission from the copyright owner before using copyrighted material. Even the copyright office cannot give this permission. When it is impractical to obtain permission, use of copyrighted material should be avoided unless the doctrine of fair use would clearly apply to the situation. Now, you can use a work without the author's permission if it's in the public domain. Public domain means the work can be copied freely by anyone. Such works include those of the U.S. government and works for which the copyright has expired. When planning a project, start by identifying works in the public domain which can be repurposed in the new work. Request permissions for materials not in the public domain early in the project. If there are images or sounds for which permission to copy cannot be obtained, it is easier to redesign the project at the beginning rather than waiting until the project nears completion. The Fair Use Doctrine is called Fair Dealing under Canadian, Australian, and UK law. These countries allow fair dealing with copyrighted work if used for private study, research, criticism, review, or news reporting. However, the user is required to acknowledge and give the source and the author's, performer's, sound recording makers, or broadcaster's name if known. But again, the line between fair dealing and infringement is a thin one. For example, no specific guidelines are provided by Canadian law except that certain exceptions are listed in the Canadian Copyright Act, such as Nonprofit educational institutions are permitted to make copies and perform works and other subject matter protected by copyright, free of charge in the classroom, subject to certain restrictions. Nonprofit libraries, archives, and museums. Institutions may copy published and unpublished works protected by copyright in order to maintain and manage their collections. 
Examples are making a copy for insurance purposes and to preserve a rare original work which is deteriorating. So, if you are a teacher, you have a little more leeway, but play it safe. If there is any possible conflict with copyright and what you are doing, get permission. Mm -hmm.